there you go. See. <laughs> we sure are. Thank you, Asita. Appreciate it. Lane, you on? Good to go. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Cruz. I'm a customer success manager uh, covering a number of accounts in Northern California, as well as state of Hawaii and state of Nevada. So welcome today. And with us, we have Lane McKellar, customer success manager covering L.A. County, Colorado and the state of New Mexico. Awesome. Thanks, Lane. Appreciate it. So today we're here to talk about Microsoft Teams um, and why it's the best platform to communicate, collaborate and create um, and really just let you know a lot about our reasons for why we appreciate this platform so much and what it's done for not only for us, but for a lot of our customers that have already adopted Microsoft Teams as their platform and meetings platform of choice. So jumping on in here, you know, really, I have this big passion around meeting our customers where they are, meeting end users where they already are to add more value. So currently Microsoft Teams has over 75 million daily active users, which is incredible. It's a, it's a amazing number to say out loud and just to really realize how many people are truly getting value out of our team solution day in, day out, especially in this virtual environment that we're all finding ourselves in today. So this is just truly um, an incredible stat and really about us transforming our customer base. And what we've seen in a lot of our customers is a transformation they've gone through, accelerated transformation, and we're now seeing them reap the rewards from that transformation and really get the most value out of that technology. Lane, Lane anything else on this slide? Yeah, one of the things that means something to me about this as an end user is the number of people outside of my organization that are also using Teams. So it's not just about how easy it is for me to use Teams as an individual end user or as an end user within my organization, but as I reach outside of my organization, there's a common workspace that people are understanding, uh, they're collaborating on, and, and just makes life uh, a lot easier. Great, thanks. Moving on to the next slide here. So what that means though is that in today's world we're having more online meetings than ever, but that can diminish the productivity, especially if the tool that we're using is just one more tool. If it's if we're using a tool that's dedicated to nothing but telecommunication to online video, are we really getting something more out of it? And that's where teams really picked up and said, you know what, we can take a tool like that and we can integrate it into all the other workflows that we have during a day. So now we can work in context. We can uh, eliminate the, the lack of follow through and some of the distractions uh, that we run into when we're just adding one more tool on top of everything else that we have to do. Ryan, anything else stand out to you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one that really stood out to me was that remote attendees do not feel included. Um, we're, we're all striving to really make sure that we're creating an inclusive environment. And regardless of where people are connecting from, making sure that we're taking their opinions and considerations into the meeting and topics at hand. Um, there's actually a stat that really drew my attention that uh, meetings are so vital that 37% of employees' time is currently spent in a meeting. And so you consider productivity, you consider inclusion. Um, what are we doing to connect those individuals? And even before uh, we jumped into this kind of pandemic world we're in, our, our new normal, if you will, right now, as we're all going through it. Prior to that, we still had 56% of meetings had at least one remote attendee. And if you've ever been kind of on the outside of a meeting where everybody else in, is in a room, it's really hard to feel included. It's hard to get your perspective, your opinion uh, across to the attendees of that meeting and just really making sure that everybody's there. But when I consider that 37% of employees' time spent in a meeting. What does that mean for, for productivity, for efficiency, uh, making sure that they're not distracted, trying to catch up from the prior meeting and really add feedback to that one? So to me, you know, this is really the challenge that we all face. Um, this is really what we're looking to solve here with Microsoft Teams and really to make sure that we have not only better meetings, but smarter meetings, more productive meetings and more inclusive meetings across the board. So moving along here, we really want to touch on why customers choose Microsoft Teams and, and really what this means to them. So Lane, do you want to kick us off here and any any thoughts on this slide? Yeah, so 
just ease of use is one of the biggest ones. You know, the is it complicated to use or is this something I can get in, just click a button and get into a meeting? Uh, being more efficient, you know, not having to go to different tools, uh, being able to work in one place and, and really uh, contain my day within one workspace virtually uh, is really something that has helped me to be able to uh, turn to Teams and say, this is my tool of choice. Uh, then security. Uh, security is one of the biggest ones. I know that especially as we talk about state and local government, uh, thinking about things like, uh, is this tool that I'm using HIPAA compliant? Does it meet CGIS requirements? Uh, for some of the bigger state and local governments, they have international outreach. And so uh, is it uh, GDPR uh, compliant? We meet all of these compliances. And because of that, uh, on, on top of the security that's already inherent in Office 365, we are one of the most secure places to work as well. You know, re really to me, this touches on that single pane of glass experience that we all look for, uh, making sure that we're being inclusive and secure. Um, I had a number of sessions even just this morning dealing with public health departments, currently leveraging teams to get the most value out of this virtual environment that we're all in and use it to connect with their customer base throughout the communities that they serve. So this is truly that single pane of glass experience, bringing everybody into that uh, true one environment to where you can get access to your documents. You can be secure, whether you're connecting via your mobile device, your web browser, or your team's desktop client, you're secure and you're really working in, in mitigating risk uh, for the county or the state that you currently work with today. So from Microsoft Teams, it's truly the hub for teamwork. And, and Lane, I love how you called this out today. Can you cover um, how you like positioning Microsoft Teams and the value that it adds for our customer base? Yeah, one way to think about it uh, are the three C's, and that's to communicate, collaborate, and create new content. So when we talk about communications, we're talking about meetings, we're talking about calling, uh, that can lead obviously into chat. So Teams is a place that has all of this built into it. Really easy within the environment to set up a new meeting. The fantastic thing is, is that as we talk about integration, it integrates into Outlook. So when you're setting up appointments and meetings, whether it be in Outlook and Teams, it's going to flow to the calendars back and forth. It's, it's a space that's integrated. It, there's no wrong answer for where you want to work. Just know that they're integrated and as you make updates that those are going to appear in different places. Chat and collaboration, the ability to reach uh, other end users, people who I collaborate with on a daily basis or outside my organization where they're at. That could mean not only geographic space, but time. Uh, just like chat, the, the ability to text on your phone, the ability for them to respond when it's convenient for them but not get lost in the pile of email uh, really is something that we standing out that we see standing out for people and finally creating new content uh, and and working in tools that we're already familiar with and integrating those into teams third-party tools i've seen end users at my organizations start to integrate things like Adobe Sign into their workflow process or other third party tools that make life much, much easier because, again, they're able to use these in one environment, that one pane of glass that you referenced, Ryan. Thanks, Lane. I appreciate that. You know, one thing that's always top of mind for me as we kind of walk through this is meeting our people where they already are, uh, making sure that we're bringing things through teams, adding that efficiency, that productivity, um, bringing those applications through it adds a tremendous amount of value. But pivoting back to the team's meeting experience, one thing that I'm very passionate about is this whole concept of what a meeting is. Uh, we're in meetings a lot. We've already covered that. We've already understand really some of the challenges with being in meetings so much during our, our work day and trying to catch up and maybe not being actively listening within the meetings that we're currently in. And so we have this concept that we, we've really focused on at Microsoft to solve a lot of business problems for our customer base with this before, during, and after meeting experience. 
And looking at it from an inclusion lens, you know, the realization that I had is that we work with a lot of different personalities. A lot of different people uh, have different personalities and I'm somebody that can jump into a meeting, feel comfortable to give my opinion and perspective on the spot, maybe review the agenda and the document while we're in the meeting and be able to provide feedback. But I also know that I work with a very large team, a diverse team. Uh, some people may uh, be more agenda driven to where they want to jump in, review an agenda before the meeting, review any files or documents that are attached to that meeting experience prior to so that when they join the meeting, they're able to give their perspective. They're comfortable uh, that they've reviewed the data set, they're coming in, they have their perspective, their opinions so that they can contribute into the meeting itself. So that's truly the before uh, meeting experience. Now, the during meeting experience, like I said, we can collaborate, co-author documents, uh, follow along with live captions. The, the team's desktop experience has such an incredible rich experience that brings live captions into the flow, into the mix, if that's how you choose to receive that information as an end user, as an attendee of that meeting. Now. Moving towards the after meeting experience, this is a big one for me because a lot of people like to process information or we've all been in those positions to where we get out of a meeting and, and say to ourselves, man, wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been great if I said, and you, and you have this amazing idea, but the meeting's over and everybody's scrambled off into their other meetings and they're currently working on that meeting and that subject at hand. And so really allowing our teammates, the people we collaborate with, that ability to go in after the meeting, interact with the documentation, provide feedback, maybe go back and give an idea and make sure that their voice is being heard. So to me, Teams is an incredible way to really bring people together, be inclusive in how we collaborate with people and make sure that everybody's voice is being heard during the meeting. Uh, Lane, anything else to add? Yeah, you know, you really bring to life some real world experiences, Ryan, and, and what you described there. You know, how many of us have heard uh, as we've kind of started to try and follow up on a meeting and we had takeaways that somebody's and we've gone to work on a specific topic there <clears throat> that was assigned to us and we find out that after we've gotten started on the assignment oh Brenda and I uh, we connected in the hallway and really had a discussion afterwards and 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 thought maybe you should actually go this direction uh, you know wouldn't that have been nice to have been included in a post meeting chat or something along those lines it really starts to become powerful when all of that can be included. Another real world example is for this two day meeting, you know, we've got a number of customer success managers that are involved in this. And as I think back on it, I don't think we really had one like meeting where everyone involved uh, was there for an hour or two hours to plan this event. This was all done outside, in, outside of a meeting environment. So being able to extend that meeting to before, during, or after, or not even need to meet everybody and take up that, that amount of time uh, can really be powerful. No, thanks for calling that out, Lane. Now, kind of shifting gears here, we did want to cover some of the meeting experience, some of the ways we've improved upon that meeting experience and how we're continuing to innovate, listen to our customers' feedback, and deliver value back to that meeting experience. So at Microsoft, we do have this new Teams meeting experience. Some of you may have already seen it. Maybe this might be new to some of you, but, but Lane, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts around the new Teams meeting experience and some of your favorite features that we can walk some customers through here. Yeah, so it's probably no secret that the engineers at team, uh, for Teams here at Microsoft are not resting. Uh, man, they are they are generating uh, new features, functionalities, and listening to you all uh, like you wouldn't believe. We're seeing innovation happen at a pace that even for technology experts, uh, we sit and and are amazed uh, sometimes. Uh, now, again, we want to make sure that you understand that as we create these new features, that these are all compliant for security and functionality that you all need in state and local government. So it takes a couple of extra weeks sometimes, but it's the right way for us to do it. And in November, we rolled out what's called the new Teams meeting experience. And this was a bundle of new features. And some of those things just made life easier to use Teams. Uh, for instance, having the control uh, tab pinned up at the top of your screen instead of having to move your cursor around uh, to access that. Now you've got access to those controls at all time without 
uh, having to move, make them easier to find and react to. And then uh, also uh, noticing pop out. Uh, that's one of my new fe favorite features. Uh, we all multitask, whether <laughs> we're supposed to or not, we do it. And so it's possible to be in a meeting and in a separate chat uh, being able to uh, to back channel with people and make sure that somebody that's coming up behind us is is bringing up the right content when they should and, and are prepared for questions that maybe we didn't anticipate going into a meeting. So that ability to pop out and multitask can be really powerful in how we hold meetings and, and multitask. So going from there to uh, additional features inside the new Teams meeting experience, you know, there's a lot that we've found make it easier for users to experience and how they interact. Ryan, you want to touch on that? Yeah, absolutely. So from a new Teams meeting experience, we've really focused on bringing people together. Everybody's in a different home environment, a different virtual environment from a large gallery view, and, and we're able to bring everyone together. So traditionally, um, for just a normal Teams meeting experience, we do have the three by three uh, video window to where you can bring those nine video thumbnails. But as soon as we have enough participants in the meeting, we are able to transition to a large gallery view, which allows you to have that seven by seven up to 49 participant user experience. Now, somebody like myself, I live at home, at, right, or working at home right now, um, and I do have a lot of kids in my home. And so from that standpoint, I get a lot of distractions. Sometimes people come into my office unannounced, and really I love the ability to connect our people with together mode. And we're actually gonna cover together mode here on the next slide in a little bit more detail, but really getting rid of a lot of those distractions around you, bringing the team front and center, either in a together mode experience or that large gallery view experience. And so shifting here to the next slide, together mode is, for me, one of my favorite technologies. It's a great way to bring the team together, to make sure that everybody is able to participate, see each other, get rid of the distractions and the noise going on in people's environments at their home offices, and making sure that people feel comfortable uh, in being in a more team environment. There, there's actually a study around meeting fatigue, and we're back, and we're back. So we were talking about together mode and really that meeting fatigue that, that a lot of us go through. So from that standpoint, there's been a lot of research done around meeting fatigue. And what's cool is, is that in using together mode and getting rid of a lot of the background noise that might be going on around you outside, you're really able to get a lot of that noise out and focus on the individuals in the meeting. So to me, together mode is a tremendous value add. It's another way to not only bring the team together and maybe even at times like some of our customers take a picture um, with your team and make people feel a little bit more connected and share it on your internal SharePoint internet sites or even on LinkedIn and just show that people are still getting together virtually. We are still meeting. Um, so again, meeting fatigue, I think we've all experienced it on some level. I'd encourage you all to try out together mode and see what that does to your personal meeting experience and how that can add some value to how your team is connecting. Lane, anything else you want to add on together mode? Yeah, uh, you know, I'll just be honest. When it first came out, it was one that I'm, I'm not in, I'm not an early adopter. I'm one of those end users that takes an extra day or two. And it really is something that has grown on me. And I didn't realize why until I saw this study and it really kind of blew me away that Teams Engineering is taking the time to figure out ways to eliminate meeting fatigue. And I had no idea that that, that was the genesis for this feature. And so it's no wonder that I like it that much better. It just it helps me be less fatigued and, and grow less tired of the meetings that I'm going through in a day. And I really will say it's a fun way to interact with colleagues. And, you know, one of the things that stood out from from my career in the past is when we used to be able to get together at offsite events and have a team picture, you know, this gives you the ability to do that without showing up like a bunch of Brady Bunch squares. So it's really kind of a fun way to interact and know that Teams in Engineering is doing work behind it to actually drive how I feel through meetings throughout my day. Thanks, Lynn. So I know that just before this uh, this half hour that we touched on accessibility, and that is something that is not lost on us at all. We understand how important that is, especially for state and local government. Uh, today, you have live captions available 
as the meeting owner or a presenter, you can start that. That will automatically start to, uh, to show up. And what's coming soon is even more exciting, and that's transcript with speaker attribution. So not only will you know what's being said, and if you need to have it in reading format, but you will know who said it, and that will be available after the meeting as well. So really a powerful way that Microsoft is continuing to extend the experience to as many people as possible and allow us to all participate and get the full meaning and context of the conversation through uh, live transcripts with speaker attribution, right? Yeah, thanks for that, Lane. You know, for me, live captions is such a great technology, and what impresses me the most is how accurate it is. Um, so I do encourage you all to test out live captions, see how it works for you, and, and just be aware live transcripts with speaker attribution is coming soon and is going to be a tremendous value add to how we interact during meetings and how we communicate with each other during meetings. So I'm very much looking forward to that type of a technology there. Now, on the very next slide, we are going to cover live captions in a little more detail. You'll see some of the screenshots here on how to enable live captions when you're in a Teams meeting experience. Again, being on the desktop experience for Teams, you're able to go to those three dots, turn on live captions for yourself and have those going across your screen. Now, to be clear that that is the end user, the participant or attendee view. When you select live captions, that's going to be going across your screen. Now, if you share your screen out and you're sharing your whole team's client um, as you're going out into the meeting experience, you can get it to show to other individuals that are out there or other attendees in the meeting. But again, it's very much meant for that individual interacting with the meeting and receiving those live captions on their side. So a great value add. Um, love the fact that live captions has come out. We're all excited about uh, getting more accessibility features built in and taking our customer feedback back to engineering and making sure that we're meeting your needs across the board. So shifting here to the next slide, Lane, because we've already covered live captions. Uh, do you want to touch on transferring uh, Teams meeting between devices? Oh man, you're hitting on one of my favorites. And I don't know if you all have really started to use Teams on a mobile device yet, but to me, it is one of my best mobile apps. Uh, the experience from the desktop to the mobile device really is quite comparable and I love to use it. And, you know, real world scenario, how many of us don't uh, have to go run our kid to uh, drop them off at school or we're coming back from lunch and we've got held up by the train and we're running a couple minutes late. And so we start a meeting on one device and then need to switch over to a different device. This uh, functionality inside of Teams makes it pretty seamless where you can be on one device, you start to join on another, you're already listening in, you haven't missed a beat, you click add this device or transfer to this device, whatever your preference is, and boom, you're right into the meeting. It automatically ends the interaction on the other device and you're off and running. People don't even know that you've switched devices unless for some reason you've let them know that, that you were on uh, something else. So uh, the ability to see what's being shared, to interact with others, to go on and off and mute, but then change at a moment's notice from one device to another is really something that has made my life easier in Teams. Yeah, thanks for that, Lane. You know, for me, um, I've already made a comment that I've got a lot of little ones at home running from practice. Um, I do coach a lot of youth sports, and so it allows me to really have that work-life balance, meet my personal commitments, meet my professional commitments, and make sure that I'm connected no matter where I am. Um, really integrating that Teams meeting experience, transferring between devices, such a seamless experience. Now, jumping in, I know we touched on security here from a meetings experience, and, and really, what do we do to control that meeting experience? So. I'm such a big fan of the meeting options within the Teams meeting itself. We have a number of different ways to control what type of meeting experience we want our attendees and participants to have. Uh, do we want to have a virtual lobby? It, you know, we can just lock it up for people in the organization to come into the meeting, um, have all the other external attendees drop into a virtual lobby where you admit them to make sure that you know who's coming into the Teams meeting. Uh, we have controls around even callers coming in to bypass the lobby, right? They could either come into the lobby just like everybody else or bypass the lobby as a caller into the Teams meeting experience. We also have a number of controls over who can present. 
um, that's a big one. You know, making sure that if we are going to be having a meeting or maybe it's even a public facing meeting, we really want to lock down and be sure that only certain people have the rights to present during the team's meeting itself. So we can choose everyone. We can choose specific named individuals that are actually a part of the meeting itself and included in the invite and select them and give them rights to present. So a lot of great controls from the organizer, the meeting organizer perspective to generate the meeting outcomes you're looking to generate. And we even have a couple of really cool new features like uh, allow attendees to mute or unmute during a meeting. So if you really want to have a large Teams meeting and you have a lot of people joining and you get some of that background noise coming in, you can really create that meeting experience make sure that people aren't getting a lot of that echo and feedback and mute all attendees in the meeting itself. So again, such a great opportunity to be able to not only set the meeting and structure that you're looking for before the meeting, but even if you forgot to do that and you wanted to change something on the fly, you could do it during the meeting, you could do it after the meeting if it was a recurring meeting and you had a lesson learned and you wanted to apply it to the future meetings that are coming up down the road. So a lot of different ways to interact with meeting options, again, before the meeting, during the meeting, or changing it after the meeting for that next recurring meeting that might be coming up down the road. So shifting gears here, uh, Lane, onto the next slide. You want to cover hard mute? Yeah, hard mute. Yeah, who hasn't been waiting for this? So this is another one of my new favorite uh, features. It seems like I'm saying that about every one of the features, <laughs> but uh, they're making life so easy. And I know that uh, for state and local government, some of the interactions, uh, let's say that you've got a, a meeting where you need certain presenters to present. You want to be able to control who comes on and off of mute or when. Uh, especially if there's concerns about background noise with people working at home. This allows you to hard mute everyone and only selectively take people off of mute when you want to. Works great hand in hand with the raise hand function. So you can uh, set up the meeting, let people know, hey, we're going to put you all on hard mute. If you have a comment, if you need to come off of mute, just hit that raised hand button and we're going to bring you off of mute and then put you on when you're when you're done. It is a fantastic way to manage those large meetings. No, absolutely. I mean, this is a tremendous value add. Um, just such a great way to control the meeting and make sure that you're having a great experience. Uh, moving on to the next one, we're wrapping up here. I, I know we're going to be covering breakout meeting rooms in more detail. Um, if we haven't already, it will be coming up here soon. Uh, but breakout meeting rooms, such a tremendous value add. It's an amazing number of use cases out there, um, different vertical fits. So please reach out to your team members. Such a great way to interact in a meeting, break out into smaller pods have some deeper discussions, using it for health, using it for permitting and planning, attorney clients, any, any number of use cases out there. Breakout meeting rooms is tremendously powerful. So if you have questions around the details around breakout meeting rooms, please do reach out to your customer success manager and V team or account team from Microsoft and get more information on that. And so for the sake of time here, we're gonna jump into the next slide, um, which is really bringing it all together and, and what this means for us. And so, from that standpoint, meeting isn't calling made simple. And that's really what it's about. It's about being able to connect, get our job done from anywhere we are, uh, whether we're in the office, whether we're back at home, on the road, traveling, whatever it might be, you can have confidence that you are able to connect to your team's meetings, to all the data sets that you need, all the Office 365 applications that come into your modern work experience and make sure that you are able to connect from a mobile device, your desktop computer, web browser, or even the Microsoft Teams meeting room devices that are out there today that a lot of our customer base are starting to get a tremendous amount of value out of. So, uh, Lane, any final notes here before we pass it back to Asante? Oh, Ryan, I just appreciate your time today. I've learned a ton from you and, and what some of your favorite features are and why, why Teams is so powerful. I, I know it has become for me. I'm excited to see what's going to continue to come our way. I do love the ease of use, the different device, everything else. Uh, man, and one of my favorites is coming up next. So I hope you all are sticking around because one of my absolute team superheroes is going to be presenting here in just a minute. Uh, he'll be introduced by Asete. And uh, man, just appreciate everybody being here today.